This is how to grow a hydroponic bucket plant. In this video, we're gonna go over how I set up, water, and take care of my plants from start to finish. If you find this helpful, I post individual videos on each hydroponic bucket plant. I've been growing for a couple years now, and this is just personally how I do it. I start all my plants in a rock wool cube. Super cheap, easy to use, and I have a high success rate with them. They hold water really well. Just give them fresh water. When I transplant them, that's when they get their first bit of nutrient water. You can also start plants into a full nutrient solution as I've done with these loofah. Now I live in Nevada where the humidity is 10 to 30%. These humidity domes help a lot. They keep the moisture in and the plants grow far better underneath them. I've had zero failures underneath the dome, and I'll show you all the failures I've had outside of the dome. Domes hold moisture a lot better, it just goes back down into the tray. I have to keep refilling the trays that are in the open far more frequently. So if I have a graft, I'll put it under a humidity dome and try to keep it at 80%. I use a Lux meter I got off of Amazon for about $15 to $20 to measure the amount of light that my plants get. Seeds go well anywhere around 3000 Lux. It's okay if it's above 3000 lux, these are at 12,000 and they do just fine. The natural sunlight is around 60,000 and at the tip of this light is 60,000 and gets lower as we get further away. I'll be going into light in more detail later in the video. Now comes the time to transfer it. The plants have new leaves after the first two, that's about a pretty good time to start or roots coming through the bottom. You can do it sooner than that. Some plants take a while like this dragon fruit or like that chickpea. These chickpeas were planted here and look just like the one you just saw. Now we just gotta set up the bucket. There's Hydroton clay pebbles. They come in the mail pretty dusty, so I like to wash them off in the sink. Just make sure you plug your sink and don't let any of them go down the drain. Every time I plant a new plant and I recycle an old one, I like to go through and cut out the dead roots and wash the Hydroton again. I washed off my Hydroton. I got it in two separate net pots. I'll show you why here in a second. Our bucket's still empty, no water in it. Just expose the top of the cube so that I can cover this top with cubes. Some roots coming out of the bottom of this celery plant, so this is a perfect time to do this. So each plant's gonna be a little different. These have really short stems on them, so I'm not gonna bury them all the way. When it gets bigger, then I'll fill it in with more cubes. This is gonna start to grow algae, on, and then the algae will spread to the entire bucket. This blueberry bush is a perfect example. The plant was too small to put the hydroton next to it, so the Rockwell cube got algae and it spread to the bucket. Use aluminum foil and a spray bottle to squirt off any of the loose algae and kill it in the darkness. Once the Rockwell cube is covered, the top rocks don't get moisture, so there won't be any algae growth in the future. Now we're gonna go give this plant a light and its water. Just starting out, I had 50% fresh water and 50% nutrient water, half and half. The nutrient water I make is from a Veg Bloom bundle I got on Amazon. I use Veg Bloom Dirty because I have some plants I made hydroponic from dirt plants. Also, if I have hard water, they make Veg Bloom RO soft if you have soft water. I'll leave a link down below to the nutrient bundle I got and you can go into more detail on what each of these individual products do. If you want to go with a different nutrient bundle, that's completely fine. There's plenty other nutrient bundles out there that work. You will always need HydroGuard. This is separate from that bundle. This helps prevent root rot. It keeps the environment clean. It turns old organic matter and decomposes it down into stuff that your plants can absorb. You kind of can't add too much of it. Two milliliters is always perfect pretty much throughout any cycle of the plant's life. I highly recommend this stuff. Like I was saying before, you kind of can't add too much HydroGuard, so I don't measure very accurately. That's about two milliliters. I used to measure in the beginning. I just poke those two holes now. I start with it at the bottom of the bucket. Then I'm gonna add this five gallon reverse osmosis filtered water with a seven pH. Filter all the water with my plants with this AquaTrue. It goes down into this bucket and into these five gallon jugs. All right, I've added my water. I'm gonna add my powders now. I got the scale zeroed out. I like to do it in the middle of what they say. So we're gonna do five grams for one gallon of fresh water. That's gonna be 25 grams. That's 25 grams of Veg Bloom Dirty. For the stack plant growth powder, also known as stack well, I'm gonna use one gram for every one gallon of fresh water. So five grams. Five grams of stack well, going in. Then we have our bloom shine additive. This is one to two teaspoons, which is five grams. So we're gonna use 7.5 grams for five gallons of water. Seven and a half grams of bloom shine additive, going in. Lastly, we got Life Plus. This is one gram for every five gallons of fresh water. But for microzial inoculation, we had one gram for every two gallons. So I'm gonna add 2.5 grams. 
Old boxes I bought of this never said one gram. The new ones say one gram. So I just never go with it. Got about 2.5 grams of Life Plus going in. Stir this up and let the soot inside of it settle. Not all of it fully dilutes. I don't like to let that soot get into my plant buckets. So I let it settle. You'll see it at the end. The reason I do that is because I do not change the reservoirs in any of my plant buckets. Even if they've been in there for a couple of years. These containers will tell you and often online they will tell you to change your reservoirs once a month. I've tried that. It shocks and kills my plants. I do not change my reservoirs. I believe HydroGuard does a good job at keeping the environment stable. None of my plants have ever had their reservoirs changed. That's been in there for two years, a year, a year, two years, two years. If you change your plant reservoir buckets, I do not recommend it. It's not what I do. All right, so the solution settled. I'm testing it with my EC tester. We got 1.9. And on the pH tester, we got 6.3. You can see how the soot settled at the bottom there. Okay, so this is my watering setup. I use this end table and this hose here so I can get over to each individual plant. The remaining plant nutrient water, sometimes I cap, but I make sure I leave it in the dark somewhere it's kind of cold so that it doesn't fester and build and start to smell. If you have a spare air pump, in my opinion, the best way to keep the nutrient water fresh would just be to hook it up to the air pump and cover it from the light. New plants, I fill it up to about halfway, which is where that line is. I'm going to finish adding fresh water to it. Added the fresh water, I filled it up to about as high as it could go. I like to make sure that the water can hit the bottom of the cube. As the plant grows, make sure you keep an eye on the roots as they go lower. The, for example, I have this broccoli plant I just recently transferred over. As you can see, it's drank some of its water. And if I lift up the net pot, no roots are coming through the bottom yet. So that means that if it ends up drinking too much, the water won't hit the bottom of the net pot. These won't get water and they'll die. And keep checking that their roots grow deep into the bucket and that the water doesn't go too low. The plants get older and mature. The roots get very low in the bucket. These wheat plants, their water is right there. You never want there to be no water in that tube. When plants get very big and large, it's inconvenient to check their root system. Plant drinks about a gallon a day. But if I see it only drank about a half a gallon, root ball must be somewhere near above. Let me pour some into this cup. That was the new plant bucket with 50-50 solution. So it tested out to about 1.27 and 6.5. As that plant drinks and goes down, it can handle more nutrients. So we're going to start to add nutrient water and bring it up to the 1.9 to an equivalent of what that nutrient solution tested out to. So all these fully mature plants should test out to what the fully nutrient solution tested out to. Now I'm going to take a sample of wheat's water to see what it tests out to. So here's that sample, we got three. That means I'm going to add a bunch of fresh water to dilute it back down to 1.9. It was originally at 1.9, but as it drinks the fresh water, it will get more dense and it will read higher. So we just dilute it with some fresh water. It should be a lower number, closer to one or two. I noticed that the pH never really changes. I just never end up really using the tester. Not that you don't have to. I filled Wheat's water back up. We're going to test it. Do you see how I diluted it down to 1.16? I would add some nutrient water next time up to 1.9. Or I could have stopped somewhere in the middle and retested it at about the red line. And then added nutrient water from there. But that shows how adding fresh water will dilute it. I have this super useful chart that tells you what to do if the EC rises or lowers, pH rises or lowers, and what may be occurring in your plant if that happens. I never really have to change or adjust the pH in any of my plants, and I never have. Plants typically drink more than they eat. Alright, now we're going to talk about my light setup. Make sure you read what the manufacturer says to do with the light. The plant lights I have came with this chart recommending hanging distance and light time on and off. Since I have so many plants in different stages of their life, I've always done a 12-12 light schedule. These are 45 watt purple lights, which don't show up on the Lux detector. The white lights do. These lights do get very hot. I keep the house at 78 degrees. That's perfect for the microbiome inside of the bucket. It doesn't get too hot or too cold. So I have this carbon filter that pushes the air through the top where it gets the hottest out of the tent. 
You could just use a fan. You don't necessarily need this carbon filter. My plants downstairs don't have one. So you don't want to touch them and you don't want your dead leaves sitting on them. You don't want to end up accidentally starting a fire or burning something. These 45 watt purple lights don't get hot to the touch. Won't burn a plant if a plant touches it. Yeah, I have around 15 of these 150 watt plant lights, but from two companies. The We Grow lights, I've had two of them have capacitors fail and have had to replace them and fix them. I have a separate video on me actually doing that. My Mars Hydro lights have never failed. These lights are around 100 to 150 dollars a piece. They all have strings holding them up. The lack of the weather endurance makes them flimsier, so they're more prone to breakage. Anything you want not breaking, I recommend tying up if that plant is not a naturally bendy plant like basil. Wheat didn't need to be tied up, obviously. My lufa, pine-like plants like to grab onto things with their trendles. The ropes help a lot. You need to make sure that you're not tying a rope around it. You won't have a failure. The trendles hold the plant. When it comes to the air pumps, I make sure I have them floating above the buckets so that if there were ever a power outage, the water won't shoot back up into the tube and into the air pump. I keep my air pumps on full blast 24-7, 365. I save all my leaves and my clippings for my compost bin. So I use these early bird live worms I got on Amazon. They come in super early. They're African night crawlers, so they're some of the best worms and they're just full of NPK. It's a great solution to grow plantain. As they procreate and create compost, I wanna sell it on my Etsy store, so be sure to check down below for that when that comes out. I'm gonna be selling these carnivorous plants on my Etsy store as well, and seeds to every one of the plants I own. I just have to have the Department of Agriculture give me my Nevada nursery license certificate so that I can sell the plants online. If you want to pause and read all this, but basically African night crawlers are some of the largest and procreate the fastest, produce some of the best compost, and they're really good bait for fish. I don't want to overfeed them, so keep it moist, and watch and add more as they like eat and decompose it down. I drilled a bunch of air holes in this five gallon bucket for them, and then this little viewing hole. In a separate video, I talk about how I get rid of bugs without pesticides, insecticides, no neem oil. It's safe and good for the environment. Bit of its own topic, and if someone was interested in just how to get rid of bugs, the rest of this video would have kind of been useless to them. That just about covers everything on how to grow a hydroponic bucket plant. Be sure to check out our other videos as we do more than just grow plants, or that other video on how to kill bugs without pesticides or insecticides. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. We really appreciate it and hope to see you guys in another video.